Let's do some more parallax hero effects on your website. We're going to follow on from a video we did a couple of days ago, and we're going to take it a little bit further. Rather than using images like, you know, uh, silhouettes and things like that, what if you use actual images, actual photographs, and you layer the background because it needs to fit with your consultancy or your business in terms of actual people? Can you still make the effect work? Well, yes, of course you can. Look, there's a preview of it just over here. Hope you like what you're seeing. Now, I've gone into Canva and I have just pulled together some images. This is so simple. Canva, you know, if you don't have the premium, it's free. It's good to use. So over here, I've pulled over an image of some people. I've got a background image and I've got a picture of a lady that's more in the forefront. Now, what I've done is if I just get rid of these is I stripped away the backgrounds of the people and the lady. And I put them onto this office layout. And then I added in some circles and a bit of transparent orange effects going on there. The main thing is, though, that the lady is the key person in this entire image. So it might be a portfolio, uh, a CV. Maybe she's a key part that you're just trying to get across in terms of your branding and your marketing. So I've just layered these images. Uh, at the moment, the pixel size for this um, canvas is 1920 by 750. I've gone wider rather than your normal desktop approach, mainly because when you start to have big screens, I want it to kind of like look pretty decent when you have a stretched image in effect. And then all I've done, once I've layered the images how I want, look, these are all interchangeable little pieces I've done here. Once I've layered it, I've then deleted bits out one by one by one. You duplicate, duplicate your section, until you get to this effect. So I've got the circles, I've got the background image, I've got the kind of like this kind of almost like the uh, shape divider, tilt effect, whatever you want to call it, people, and then I've got her as well. The key thing is that when you download these, you, as a PNG, make sure you've got transparent background selected. Download as a transparent background, brilliant. Then I put it through bulk size, bulk resize photos.com, to turn them into WebP. All of those images at 1920 by 750 came in at a total of 280 kilobytes. Super small, I'm pretty happy with that. And when I stick them into our media library, so there we go, we've got the images over here. Yeah, look, some of these images, like 14 kilobytes, they're pretty small, good to use. Now we can get started with our Elemental. By the way, though, um, a lot of you keep saying, hey, well, your channel's not exploded yet. Why have you not got more viewers? Well, I need you to help me out here. So don't just subscribe and like. The like helps a lot, so please do like. But share. Let other people know about our channel and our videos. You know, um, please do let them know. So I'm, I'm pleading to you. Please go ahead and do it. Right, let's now get into our Elemental page. First thing we're going to do is add in our section and our background. So simple. We are going to click and have a section. I'm just going to have one column, okay? I'm just going to go with full width for now. I'm going to say no gap and the height. I'm actually going to set this to be roughly about this big. Okay, I might adjust it later on. I'm not doing a full height this time. I'm just doing a bit of a 524. You would adjust it accordingly to what you want. Column position, I'm going to leave that as top. I seem to find that if I put it as top, it works better than if I put it as middle or bottom. Don't ask me why, it just works better. That's all we're going to do with the content. Not the layout, sorry. Now with the style of the background, we're going to pick our background image. So we're going to pick this one here. It is literally just a image. And we're going to do uh, center, center. Uh, we're going to have it as fixed. No repeat. And we're going to have it as a cover. Um, by the way, though, um, in case you can notice it, I actually blurred it a tiny bit in Canva. So the background image, I gave it a blur about, I think it was three or four, because anything in the background, you want it to slightly blur away from the foreground image. You want that to be, you know, you know, when you're on your phone, you have the portrait effect. You want the foreground person to be in your face, the background, just slightly creating some distance. OK, so we've now added in our background. Right. Let's go back over here. And that's all we're going to do to the section. No scroll effect, nothing like that. Now let's start adding in our images. OK, and this is where it gets starts to get quite easy. We drop in our first image and I'm going to pick. Now you've got to think about your layering, your ordering of what sits where. I'm now going to go for the people. So I'm going to drop those in and we now have the people. I'm going to set them to be full. If you don't set them to be full, 
Sometimes they come out as the wrong size, so set them to be full. We go to positioning in the advanced tab, and the position is going to be absolute. If you set this as fixed, it will be fixed there throughout the website, and then you're going to make sure every other section has a higher Z index. Now, you will notice when I preview it, they are way too high than they need to be, so I'm going to have to drop them down, and this is where sometimes you have to add in some vertical um, offsetting for the positioning. But before we do that, I always say do that after you've done your scroll effect. Because if you do it, and then you do the scroll effect, the scroll effect will affect your vertical orientation. So let's just go back a step, okay? We added in an image. We went to the advanced tab. Positioning is set to be absolute. The vertical orientation where I can do all of this, we're not gonna do yet. We now go to motion effect. And we're gonna say scrolling effect, activate. Vertical scroll, this is going to go down, but we're going to set this to be eight. The reason I've gone eight is because I want it to kind, I want things that are further behind to move quicker than things that are ahead of you. It's just the way the horizon and vertical things work. You could adjust this just be seven, maybe, so you don't have as big an effect. Now, when we look at this and I have it on the full screen, that is actually now looking okay in terms of layout and where they're standing on the carpet. If you feel they're too high, you drop your vertical orientation. If you feel that they're too low, you increase it. So you start to mess around with where are they on the screen. I'm okay with that. All right, so we've got a vertical scroll effect of seven. Okay, I'm okay with seven. And then we've got them going down and they're positioned okay. One thing we should do on the image, and I wanna make sure we do this before I move off, is I'm just gonna set the width and the maximum width to be 100%. The reason I do that is if you don't set it, it could start to mess around when you start to move into different screen sizes. Let's just check that is looking okay. Right, here's what we now do. And it gets easy at this point. We just duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. About five times, four times there, three times even, sorry. I'm now gonna to go to the second image, which is duplicated, and I'm going to pick the circle, right? So we have the circle. I'm now just gonna to go to advanced, go to motion effect and I'm going to set the vertical scroll for this to be a five. So there is still an effect, but it's not going to be moving as much as the people. The people will move more, the circles will move, but not as much. Let's now go to image three. Let's now pick the uh, tilted effect diagonally thingy midgy I've got there. We now have that. Now at the moment, that has dropped behind the people. Do not worry about that just yet, okay? We go to advanced, we go to motion effect. Look, we don't have to do positioning. It's already gonna be set to absolute. Bear in mind though, if you did any vertical orientation on image one and then you copied it, you might need to take the vertical orientation off or even add some horizontal. You know, this is elemental at the end of the day. Play around with it, make it work for you. So the motion effects for this now, Okay, which is currently uh, seven for the people, five for the circle. I'm going to drop to be three for that horizontal effect thing we got going on there. Now, what I will say, though, is this is where we might need to start messing around with Z indexes. So this one, I want to be at the forefront. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a Z index of two. You can assume that anything that does not have a Z index is like a zero, or it's blank or anything. It's good to apply a number, good practice, but if you're not overly worried about it, I've just given it a two, so now it's ahead of everything else that we had in there in the first place. Now, when I look at this on the screen here, that is fine, okay? Bear in mind, okay, that when you're looking at it with the editor of Elemental still present, you never get the full picture. Always hit the chevron and go to either preview or just get rid of the editor. So you can now start to see how's it gonna look on a screen. And just because it looks like this now here, on a bigger screen, it could look a little bit different. So I do recommend that I'm doing this on a MacBook Air. I've reduced my screen size because I'm using OBS to record and all of that stuff. But I would always say when you're doing this, make sure you're on a proper monitor, preferably a minimum of 21 inches if you can, just so you get to understand exactly how it's looking. But you don't have to listen to me or care what I say. Okay, so this now has a motion effect as well. Now we're gonna go to the very last person or the last image we will now add in the lady who is the key person within this image. She's gone behind. We might as well give her a Z index of three. Three is ahead of two, and two was the shape thing. 
Now this one's different in terms of motion effect. We have two options. We could now not apply any motion effect. So whereas everything else will be moving down behind her, except the background, which stays static, she does not move. And you get the illusion that there's things going on. Or we can apply a motion effect or a scroll effect, whereby as you scroll, rather than her moving up, because we don't have her legs, because we just took it from Canva, and you're going to then get this like broken effect, which I don't want, we can actually expand. So as you scroll down, she now becomes bigger, um, which kind of could work quite well with the circles behind as well. A scale effect. And we are going to say scale up. Scale down means she will shrink away. Scale up means she's going to shrink further towards you. Put this down to be about two. So what will happen is, as you, as you scroll down, she's going to slowly come forward. Now, we will adjust the viewpoint of this if we have to. I'm now going to start testing this. And the best way to test it, if you try testing it now, it's not going to work very well. What I'm now going to do is actually add in another section below. So let's go ahead now and add in section two. I'm just going to drop it in over here. I'm actually just going to give it a, I don't really care about the height. I'm just showing you how this works. I'm going to say no gap. I'm just going to make it, uh, we'll make it a, no, no, we'll, we'll do a box for now because I might add in some wording in it. I'm just going to go 900 for now. Um, no gap, height, and I'm going to give it a background color. And I'm going to give it the orange color that I'd selected. Well, the, it's the orange color of the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to offset my section. I'm going to move it up, but I'm going to add in a shape divider, but not the shape divider you're thinking. If I add in like a tilted effect or something, it won't be transparent. I need it to be transparent overlap over here. So I'm going to show you this website. This is Bennett feely.com uh, clippy. I'll put a link to it in the description. It'll be in the timestamp. I'm going to get a CSS code to apply to my section. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to actually pick this one here. Don't worry about how complicated it is. I'm not overly fussed about that. But what I'm trying to get is have enough dots available there for me start to kind of mess around with, well, what kind of look am I going for? So we're going to go with something like I think something like that will kind of work for us, okay? So once you've done that, can you see down here, you have this CSS code that's popped up for you. You copy that, I'm gonna go to my section two and I'm gonna give it a class name and I'm just gonna call it uh, section, uh, we'll just call it section 22, all right? I'm just gonna get a random name there. Custom CSS, I'm gonna write section 22, open curly bracket and you'll get the close bracket and I'm gonna now drop that in. And as soon as you've done that, you now get this kind of like white pattern then. You're gonna say, well, that's kind of not really done what you wanted. Seriously, do not worry about that. All I've got to do to this section is now give this some negative top margin. And look, as soon as I do that, can you see it's, it's taking the pattern up with me? You might want to add in some um, padding for the margin because that's 119, let's go with 150. And I've now dropped in some words into section two, but I'm not done here yet. I want to do just a little bit more. I'm going to copy this header and I'm just going to drop it into section one. So if we now go to section one, we've got the heading. I'm going to pick the heading up and I'm going to drop the heading uh, behind uh, the lady like that. I'm just going to go to advanced, go to positioning again. Okay. And I'm going to make the positioning for this one be, sorry, not the width, the positioning. I'm going to make this one be a, uh, a fixed. Let's just give it a really big font size, okay, just for the sake of it. So I'm going to go with parallax like that, okay. And, you know, you might want to change the wording, you know, have it, you know, to the left-hand side, however you want to do it. Please do play around with what you want to go for. Um, I'm just going to give this heading um, some margin of about 50. I'm actually going to make it just slightly transparent as well. Something like that, okay, right? So what we now have is some wording behind her, and we've got um, her there. We've got other people there. We've got a background. We've got things going on. So if we now view it now, that's looking okay, but how does it look practically? So as we preview it, can you see as we move up and down, the circles are moving down. OK, the people are moving down at a gradual rate. OK, they might look like they're moving up, but they are actually moving down. But the trouble we have here is that the lady, unfortunately, the scale up effect isn't really working because we lose sight of her pretty quickly. I've removed the scale for her. 
and I've changed it to be a vertical scroll of down and five because I think that's going to work better now. I realize now the scale up wasn't working very well. You got to play around with it. So look at the wording, look at the background, look at the circles and look at her. You know, I mean, this is using images, photographs, not not your jpeg -y images or not JPEG, you know, like freehand or just bits of clip art or whatever. These are now using actual photographs and we have like an effect going on here. So if you were now trying to, you know, get across your consultancy or just your business or people, this again is a really, really cool effect. It's free. This is no plugin. No, I'm going to say there's no coding. Yes, I did use coding for the shape divider. Give me a break here. But this is really simple and easy to use. Um, I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. Please do share. Let other people know about this. I hope you find it useful. But I think this is a really, really cool way of doing some fancy hero banner effects that are just a little bit different. Add a little bit. You're adding in some form of interactivity. You know, because look, you go, oh, look at this scrolling up and down now. But it's it's not that difficult to do. If you think about the approach, hey, take care and I'll see you soon.